This project um, that we've titled Performative Gardening, Cultivating Conversations on the Sustainable City, arose out of a conversation that we had, a series of conversations, about issues such as food security in New Zealand and food transport in peak oil times. Um, New Zealand makes most of its money growing food. However, we also import most of our food, which seemed a strange paradox for us to be in. So we proposed actually putting food in front of people in the cities, in the CBD, as a way to generate conversation and also as a spark point to have a series of workshops. Now, what we're doing isn't singular or alone. There are several precedents. This one is for parking, which started in 2005 in San Francisco. And simply put, they were highlighting the lack of open space in cities for people to occupy. The idea is very simple. You just pay the meter and cars no longer occupy it, but people actually get to. These temporary parks have now gone international, and there was a parking day in Wellington, in fact, last year. So 10 years on, parking day is growing strong. Um, anybody can use it. It's easily approachable. If you go to Rebar's website, which is the collective, or if you just put in parking, you can easily involve yourself in a parking day as well. Another precedent for us that was important uh, about raising awareness in food has to do with a project called PF1. Now, PF1 mean, means public farm. It was designed by Work AC. They're an architecture firm out of New York City, and they had an installation associated with the Museum of Modern Art. Their contemporary art center is called PS1, and they proposed having a green roof slash farm inserted in the city where they have concerts for people. The idea here was just making New Yorkers more aware of where their food actually comes from and being around it in kind of a hybrid space that normally you wouldn't associate with an art gallery or uh, even a museum. Here are some renders of it for their proposed, it was a competition, and then there it's built at night looking out of Queens towards the uh, Manhattan skyline. And here's a detail of the sauna tubes and the greens planted. This actually became a pamphlet of sorts above the pavement, the farm, uh, architecture and agriculture at PF1, which I recommend anybody reading if they're in the design field and they, they want some pointers. It's quite great. Another precedent that we came across, um, actually the woman Amanda, sorry, Heather Ring sort of sparked this, is called Union Street Orchard. And this was in London to coincide with Architecture Week 2010. And so what they did is they occupied a derelict lot and they got a series of orchard trees donated and then they had an impromptu art gallery that they had along the side of the, you can see the wall there. This one, all of the trees eventually went to Council Flats afterwards, but it was a place, simply put, hard scrabble wrote, <coughs> built out of the furniture that they could find, pallets and such and painted. And then they started having workshops there. They had film screenings. Um, sort of a be-in type of thing that impromptu would happen and they had concerts and indeed people would leave messages for each other. Sort of like what we did before email, if you will. Now, this image I want to put up just to show you that people in fact did used to grow fruits and vegetables in Wellington. The image on the right, that, that was fruit um, and cabbages that were grown um, actually on Courtney Place and then on the left you can see a more vegetated Courtney Place which is one of our proposed sites. We're proposing putting three installations in. This first image here shows what St. James Plaza might look like with um, you know, tomatoes and chard and beans growing. The plants that we're actually using have been donated by the Koanga Institute. Uh, these plants are unique in that they've been seeds that were collected by various immigrants to New Zealand um, and harvested and then actually sent back out into the community. So, for example, if you look on the top left, those are Gila beans, and they actually were collected in caves 5,000 years ago in the southwest of North America, uh, attributed to the Anastasi Indians. But you can also see here, this is a Pakistani carrot. Now, that's what carrots originally looked like. They weren't originally orange. They were modified um, along their travels. You can see the icicle radishes on the bottom. 
quite unique, but actually heritage varieties that were brought. I think it's really important to put these foods out there and actually show uh, people in Wellington what foods people used to eat versus necessarily what we consider food now. We've been, I started a course with some landscape architecture students I teach at Victoria University and they've been helping grow these plants. Um, Barrenport Nurseries, part of the Wellington City Council Nurseries, graciously allowed us to use their um, glass houses to start these seeds. And for the students who are landscape architects, it might seem strange, but a lot of them haven't actually grown plants, really, or much less grown food. So this was an exercise in re-familiarizing them with how that process actually goes. We're proposing three sites, and I might turn it over to Amanda now. Sure. Okay, so I mean, we, we're really coming at this from the point of view of designers, and I guess we, we see sustainability um, or the lack thereof in our culture as being fundamentally an issue of design um, that we currently fail to think about our processes and, and cultural products holistically. We don't think about how they are produced, how they're used, how they're decommissioned. Um, and so we see that there is great potential um, to enhance our sustainability through good holistic design. Um, so in this little project we're really we're using design to act as a kind of sign of change um, the change that we think that we need to make anyway towards lower carbon local food production um, and we think that's particularly important um, to enable food security in an era um, in which oil is going to become increasingly expensive and you know this is something which is, um, comes up time and time again so we're aiming to generate public discussion on these issues as the gardens move from um, that first site, which is the St James Plaza on Courtney Place, um, to the second site adjacent to Te Papa, and then the third site at, at the Civic Square. Um, and they'll be doing that from February through March. So the project um, performs or displays food production in an urban environment. Um, and clearly we're not intending to feed the city from these planters, um, though we would love for people to um, sit there at lunchtime and eat tomatoes and pick herbs. Um, rather we're wanting to feed a conversation about, um, about food sustainability and, and we're particularly wanting to feed that conversation amongst the general public um, because we see that really in New Zealand public debate is um, rather muted and oftentimes it's, you see the same faces at these sustainability discussions which is fantastic but there is a whole another kind of group of people out there who aren't really being reached and if we need to and um, I think we do need to make large scale cultural change then we need to be able to speak to a range of different audiences in a range of different ways um, and to do, do it in an engaging manner and so we hope that um, these design installations kind of pique people's interest. Um, so the, the, the planters and the, the signposts, which have um, you know sort of little word memes about sustainability, um, and the the, the sign um, signs themselves, we hope that they will kind of communicate. Um, but we also want to run workshops on. Um, a range of issues to do with local food production, um, to do with the relationship between food security and energy security, and to do with the relationship between a greener urban environment and better health for the city and for the city's inhabitants. Um, so the, we're going to finish in, in the Civic Square and we're hoping to have a couple of workshops there, um, particularly about food uh, and gardening, um, so one for children, um, for, the lo for the local creche, and another just a general one for people to join in. We're hoping to do that with um, the chef from Nico who um, does really great food um, and who is an avid gardener. Um, she's, she's with the Brooklyn Transition Town and they've set up an urban orchard up in Brooklyn. So that's a key outcome for us probably um, is that this project um, we leverage to uh, build a forum on food in the sustainable city which pulls together the many different stakeholders in this area. Yeah.
So that's it. Thank you.